Hello everyone, this is Kaifu here with game 1 in the series between Frankie and Amanda. Amanda on the right side is playing Grim, using Grim's consistency to help her with like in any situation she needs, any toolboxing she needs like for Rim, she like might even search for like hunters for finishing off or she search for Gretel for ramping, so it gives uh, Amanda extra advantage she needs. But however, it gives a disadvantage for Frankie because Frankie doesn't know in this situation, won't know what kind of, kind of uh, Grim uh, is Amanda playing. So so obviously in the first time uh, Amanda when first is showing screen so showing that Frankie that he's he is going to be versing a control room while on my left side we have Frankie playing Pandora another mystery box that uh, uh, Amanda won't know because even neither player will know what they were playing the first time so they might mulligan the wrong one so Amanda won't be sure what kind of Pandora it is it could be a dark it could be a light she doesn't know because if she overcommit like putting a lot of cards on the field and it's Pandora white uh, light and nukes the whole field she will be very devastated if it's uh, if she keeps too much cards in the hand uh, she will lose her, her own tie hand by turn six so it's very friendly for her but it gives uh, both player the extra edge they need for uh, consistency and also unknown but for some this uh, this Pandora is really really different compared to the normal Pandora that was won in Italy during the uh, Italy uh, Grand Prix in March this one using a lot of green using a lot of ramping allowing uh, uh, allowing uh, allowing Frankie to uh, get to his cows faster and not only that allowing him to judgment a bit faster so by turn 3 or turn 4 even he can judgment before turn 6 so which allows him to like do a lot of devastating plays not only that Pandora usually always have a uh, spirit uh, spirit to spare uh, so allowing to discard the opponent's hand so not allowing your opponent having any good cards in hand anymore especially it's random so not allowing like okay uh, I can't he, she can't pick or he can't pick what card she can discard I'll do it for you by random so pretty much if I discard you two good cards then you're really in bad position so let's get back to the game itself now currently both players setting up their big plays and so on uh, however Amanda does have a, a big ball present with uh, Glinda's to cancel spells uh, Tinkerbell which is 800 attack 800 defense uh, and two bodies on the field to defend the, the attack point while Frankie on the on the left side only has Gretel and Elvish Priest on the field that can't really do much at the moment besides uh, setting up their following play um, now Amanda does leave one open for later on if she needs to searches. So uh, she does attack directly for 200 point damage. Obviously, Glinda comes to play, not allowing. Uh, um, I think it was Glinda. Oh, it was a previous turn ago. I, I don't remember myself. So here comes the outer world, killing the um, Tinkerbell. Cause uh, obviously Glinda cannot stop it from happening. So tough luck for her then, I guess. And dropping another Elvish Priest on the field. Uh, if I was Frankie, um, I would actually. Uh, tap my Elvish Priest and put a, uh, another Magic Stone on the field but just in case that Amanda does play some removal spell because as you can see she does play green black and green black does indicate that she might be playing Stone of the Death or uh, Outer World even you won't even know because unless you see her decklist you won't even know what uh, what tech she has what uh, new strategy she might add into her deck so you will never know just saying so she might, he might be taking big risk, but obviously the risk paid off because uh, I don't think Amanda plays any black removal spell in the deck, even if she plays black. Now you'd be wondering, what's the point of playing black in her deck? Well, I did take a look in Amanda's deck and she does play Necromonicon in her deck. So pretty much whatever she discard with Grim's ability, and not only that, whatever dies on the field, whatever spell she used in the early game, she can get her all right back, so it won't do a lot of damage to her. And obviously, ooh. Now, Amanda using Zeke the Ancient Magic, powering up all her resonance, so obviously the uh, Glinda will not die from the block, so if I was Amanda, I wonder why she didn't cancel the summon for uh, Felsing, maybe she forgot about it, or she thinks it's not a big threat enough to the point that uh, it doesn't matter, but she maybe wasn't expecting the uh, Felsing to blocking the Glinda, so the Glinda would die, and she dropped another Glinda on the field, which is another interesting play, because now uh, there's two Glinda on the field, which is causing a lot of trouble for Frankie, because she uh, Frankie would not able to use any of his early game spells, and uh, at 400 directly, the Elvish Priest are obviously that uh, Frankie does block it with the Gretel as a body, because the Elvish Priest is a bit more important than Gretel, because even without Gretel does give you the plus one if you activate Absolute Cake Stone, but uh, if, you, if your opponent doesn't play any spell, the Absolute Cake Stone are dead in your hand. Speaking of Absolute Cake Stone, as you saw, Frankie does have two Absolute Cake Stone in his hand that he can't use at the moment, unless, unless, um, uh, unless Amanda plays a big spell, but however, she isn't playing a big spell, but uh, Frankie is trying to get rid of as many Glinders as he can because those Glinders are really problematic. 
for him to use because he can't use any of his early power spells like such as Spirit Despair or his Necromonicon and so on and he's forced to use the Thunder onto a Glinda which he doesn't want to do. He does pay uh, 4 to play um, uh, Mephostable on the field and killing his one of his Elfish Priests and having a 15-15 body on the field putting a big threat on the field for Amanda to handle. Now does Amanda does have a uh, 800 attack, 800 defense Tinkerbell on the field so it won't matter too much as long as uh, she's in control. Now she does play Alice. Uh, Alice is a uh, number resonator, not a fairy tale. Obviously, if it was a fairy tale, it'd be really robusted. Uh, what it does is that uh, it actually does two things. It acts as a removal spell and, it, and also acts as a, a protection spell. So pretty much whatever Frankie has, like uh, like thunders, stunning the death, and so on, whatever he's tried to do, Alice will be able to protect it as long as he pay that one blue magic stone. And she does play green blue magic stone, which will allow her to protect her field. Not only that, uh, if you, pay, you can tap. Her, Alice that is, you can tap Alice and pay one white to remove a resident from the game so actually removing the Mephesto away from the game will allow her to get rid of threat but at the moment she doesn't have a light magic stone on that is untapped at the moment so she can't do much and she dropped a little prince on the field and that little prince is currently sitting on 1000 attack because there's two there's one little uh, one free drop and one and a couple one drops so making a, a 1000 attack 1000 attack uh little prince and none of that that tinkerbell is currently sitting on on 1200 attack and 1200 defense so two very big resonate on the field for frankie to handle and while frankie only has a mephesto and as you can see mephesto cannot handle like all the resonate on the field especially with alice on the field because alice will able to protect those big resonate with uh, her ability as long as she has the blue magic stone now she is tapped though so all frank has to do is top deck into like a stone of the death outer world or something to get rid of the problematic cards on the field and here comes the Glinda for 500 point damage and uh, Frankie does take it put him down to 3,300 uh, 3, life point compared to uh, Amanda's 4,000 life point now that was a good play and uh, not blocking because if it does block an uh, incoming uh, 1,200 attack uh, think about directly to uh, Frankie's life point so obviously he doesn't want to take that much life so he'd rather take the 500 instead of the 1,200 life now let's see, uh, he set the standby, uh, as you guys don't know, in the new ruling he's saying that you can play any card from your hand as a set standby. So pretty much he is trying to bluff Amanda what uh, what he is setting, uh, but actually he, he before he, when he declared an attack, he actually decided to kill the Glinda. Now I'm not really sure about killing Glinda, I'm not quite sure if Glinda is really important, but looking at his, at, at his hand, he doesn't really have a lot of good... Uh, spell to play with beside the two absolute cakes on he just put face down which I just saw uh, so mean I would kill the Tinkerbell right away because Tinkerbell is one of the bigger attack on the field not only that uh, because she is tapped out you have the opportunity to kill something on the field with a Mephesto because uh, killing Glinda sure Glinda will stop your spell play but how about you don't have any big spell play, play besides the um, besides the uh, absolute cakes on and Literally, Absolute Cake Stone is dead unless your opponent plays a spell. And looking at the way it is now, it's mostly a lot of resonant on the field. So I would kill the uh, the kill of the kill the run of the resonator, such as a uh, little prince or even Tinkerbell. Mostly, I will aim for Tinkerbell because Tinkerbell will get bigger, but little prince is a little bit easier to handle with the levels and so on. Now levels the uh, the drops anyway. And she so search for another thing about putting another threat on the field for Frank to handle. So now uh, she's gonna be dropping a thing about on the field, I believe. Yes, yeah, she does drop it now. Two think about on the field currently sitting on 1200 attack and defense, which is huge. And uh, obviously, those two standby might be uh, uh, causing. Um, Amanda to overthink like what those standbys are because she uh, um, uh, cause Frankie is bluffing those standbys so see what he can uh, get out of it uh, obviously blocking the Tinkerbell uh, not allowing the extra damage to go through now Amanda is still on 4,000 life points she, so she is in a strong position not in a full almost like a lot of resident on the field she has two blockers no three blockers with two cash cat and one gravel to block with and three big attackers which is like uh, two Tinkerbells and uh, and a uh, little prince not only that she has an Alice on the field which can protect and act as a removal spell to uh, not allow the Frankie have anything uh, to deal with not only that because uh, it's an ability there's no way uh, Frankie can cancel it as a uh, as Assuming that um, Frankie doesn't play that blue spell that cancels active abilities, if he doesn't, then he's in a lot of trouble because he's an active ability. So pretty much whatever uh, Amanda does, she is in the driving seat at the moment. So she is in control of what Frankie can do, what, Fra what Frankie can't do, and try and kill one of the Tinker Bells. Um, 
yep, he does kill the Tinkerbell, so of course not. Uh, uh, he doesn't want to kill one of his uh, own. Uh, uh, she doesn't want to sacrifice her Alice because Alice is one of the main cards she can do with, and she, and Frankie's judgment and discarding Amanda's last card, so she doesn't have any cards in hand. So it was just simple plus one, but it would be a lot devastating if Frankie kind of got off like in the early game, not allowing. Uh, Amanda have a big hand, but now all the cards on the field, so the threat is mostly on the field instead of the hand. So um, she goes search for one inch boy, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure what can one inch boy do in this situation. Maybe it's a fodder, but I'm not quite sure myself. And uh, she does take it back surprisingly. Oh, uh, so, so she's taking back and searching for Glinda instead. Putting Glinda on the field, making something unblockable, is really huge because now uh, Frankie has to take a big ass think about directly to the face so what that means is that we're putting Frankie's life down even closer and closer uh, to a uh, low life point range and low life point range meaning like when he came from a Tinkerbell or Little Prince or even Alice because Alice is a flying resonator so he she can block a Mephistopheles from uh, attacking directly or she can use uh, Alice's ability uh, to remove Mephistopheles from the game but she does take 500 point of damage but uh, with four life points, she is in good position. And dropping the Glinda, obviously, and putting Tinkerbell on 1,200 attack and 1,200 defense, so hitting for a large amount of damage. Uh, let's see what she can do. Now, uh, Amanda doesn't have any cards in hand at the moment, so she is wide open that if uh, if uh, Frankie draw like a really good power spell, that it will uh, force her to be in bad position. But attacking directly, putting Frankie down to 1,100 life point compared to Amanda's 4,000 life point. So life point wise, not going to too good with uh, Frankie. Not in that resource as well because he did neg to himself by putting two bluff standby on the field, and knowing that he's had to face another Glinda on the field, Glinda will able to stop any spell play that uh, Frankie will do as long he doesn't uh, long as long he doesn't pay the cost. And he drew another absolute kick zone. Another dead card, he can't do anything, so he's scooping it up. Game 1 goes to Amanda, so thank you for watching, thank you for listening guys, hope you guys enjoyed it, please stay tuned for Game 2.